I say brining because to be honest I look like a raw turkey in a salt bath. That being said, I am doing a little bit of self-care today like I do every day because my body is like, what are we doing? And I'm like, that's a really good question body. I don't know. It's just happening and we're going with the flow. We're going limp through this pregnancy. We are now 36 weeks pregnant. So we spent a lot of time in a lukewarm bath um, watching Sandy Yaw's vlogs because they relax us and keep us a little bit more mentally stable. Um, though I'm not sure I've ever been mentally stable. But as we enter the conclusion of our first pregnancy, I don't know why I'm saying our. Maybe it's because there's two of us in here right now. Um, I thought it would be kind of interesting to show you guys how I am preparing for labor and for baby um, because I'm doing some things specifically that I think will help my body and help my mind on D-Day. That's what I'm calling delivery, labor, whatever. Sorry, I keep burping, I can't stop. Um, but you might be wondering. <laughs> Why did I use that little nozzle to fill the bath? Hmm. Excellent question. Um, my sweet husband, Gwyneth Palcho, has put a special filter on the nozzle that I used, and that's supposed to purify the water, um, and he would prefer that I not soak in just regular tap water. So, <laughs> per his request, I take a good long time to fill this bath up um, with the nozzle. Um, I'm living in the bath because my rib hurts really, really bad, and being in the bath kind of takes some of the weight off. Like, I'm not fully floating, but this is where my rib feels the best. Yeah, I'm just chilling. Just chilling in here. Just chilling, thinking about all the stuff I'm not going to be able to do anymore when I have a little nugget. I'm also thinking about all the stuff I get to do with my little nugget. But mostly watching Sandy Yaw's vlogs. I'm on live stream, like, yeah, but at least I didn't get anyone pregnant. Lotioning up this bad boy feels pretty good. My dad gets me this Burt's Bees Mama stuff, and I've been enjoying it. I also add, because I get itchy throughout the day, I use this, oh shit, I'm a dumb bitch. Just put oil all over the floor, but that cost me my life later. Whatever this is, the honest oil stuff. I do both. Oh. Cause I get itchy throughout the day. Hold on. Can you see me? Is my face in the frame? My skin is stretching a bunch cause I'm getting awfully plump. And as my skin stretches, I get itchy. So I put lotion and oil basically all over my body. And that's another thing that I do for self care and to get ready for everything. I'm just sort of lubing myself up, keeping it all moist. You know what I'm saying ladies? Oh. Couldn't reach my whole mouth around it. Sorry, she's physically incapacitated. So, another thing I'm doing to prep for labor. Oh, the thong's out. Whale tail! Oh, another thing I'm doing to prep for labor is cat cow. I do about 100 cat cows a day. Whenever I feel like I need to start doing it, I just do it. If I'm binge watching a TV show after every episode, I'm cat cowing it. Hi, Icky. Then, I put my leg up here because I don't have a yoga block. So one leg up here and one leg this, and I just do this 25 times per leg. 
I heard this is good for your pelvic floor or something. Oops. I was gonna put my snuggle blanket back in my bed. I'm a 34 year old expecting mother and I still sleep with a snuggle cozy. It's my godmom Kissy's nightgown. I sleep with it every night since I was born, basically, I would say. All right, now I'm gonna turn around and give you the money shot. If you're not, uh, if you're not tipping in the comment section for this one, then I don't know what's wrong with you. Now I do a version of a back thing that Joe said is good and will help because my back hurts so bad from the rib situation. So I get down on my side so that my stomach doesn't cone. Go down this way. And then I do 25 hip raises. Now I hug my boy. I tell you, I love you, boy. I love you, buddy. You're doing a good job in there. Can't wait to hug you, my little son. Okay, so now I turn on to my side. So I can pick myself up this way. Woo! And now I do a, another little back thing that helps with my ribs. I need a little more room. Oh, your girl's tired. And then I kind of just sit here a little bit, noticing that I'm starting to stink, um, which is what it is. I smell a little bit like sunless tanner, which is interesting. I always thought. Jorgen Sunless Tanner had a very human smell to it. And the way that I smell right now, as a human being, does confirm that suspicion. So that's crazy. It's times like these that I, I'll do a bunch of belly breaths and I'll have a, I'll say my mantras to myself because it's pretty scary and daunting to think about going through labor, which is, only a limited time, right? So labor is a finite chapter of my pregnancy. It's, you know, a day, maybe a couple days, but not more than that. So labor comes with pain, but the pain is with a purpose. And then after that, I have my whole rest of my life to be a mom. And that to me, is a little overwhelming. Like I have a hard time when I think about things in infinite or infinity or whatever. Like I need a limited time frame, or my brain starts going, what the f bitch? So one of the things that I do while I practice my deep breathing and the deep breathing is I breathe in through my nose until my stomach expands and gets big like a balloon. And then I let it out. I put a hand on my tummy. I don't know if you can even see my tummy. I can't see what the camera sees. Is that my tummy? Is that my tummy? Yeah. So I go. So I do that and I remind myself, oh, where is she? So I do that and I remind myself that I am capable of doing anything that comes across my plate. I can handle everything that comes across my plate as long as I am living in acceptance of what it is. As long as I'm not fighting what is coming, I can do it. I can work through anything. And I have a very big faith in a higher power that has my best interests, my dog's best interest, my husband's best interest, my baby's best interest, my family's best interest in their grasp. And I uh, visualize my higher power, which I think I've shared with you guys before. My higher power is Alan Ripley from Aliens. 
specifically her in the power mover suit, telling the alien, get away from her, you bitch. Um, but I see her in that power suit, holding me and my whole family with that great light on her, and we're just protected. Every nasty, it's not that uh, the universe ensures that nothing bad happens to me, but it's that I trust that the universe has equipped me with everything that I need to weather any storm. Any storm I can get through with the love of, the, of my higher power. So I, while I'm doing those deep breaths, I picture that. I picture my family being cared for. I picture myself being able to move through any storm. I picture the universe, my higher power, Ellen Ripley, telling all the negative self-talk, all the self-doubt, all the anxiety and fear to get away from her, you bitch, because I am capable, I can do it. And that's something that I heard another mother say. She said she was at the end of her rope and when you're like transitioning from early labor into like the last stages of labor, which is where you're like babies coming, um, she felt like she could she wanted to go on medicated, she felt like she couldn't do it. And that's a normal thing to think and feel. And her husband said, You can do it. And so something sorry, it makes me feel like crying. So I'm telling myself now that I can do it. I can do it. I can weather any storm. My higher power is with me. I can walk through anything with the strength of my higher power. And it's like a very profound peace that comes over me. And it does make me cry because it's really like, this is new for me. Like I've never, I might seem like a really confident woman and like a person who doesn't really give a shit about what anybody thinks about me, but there's a lot of self doubt in my head. There's a lot of self hate. There's a lot of you're not worthy of love. There's a lot of all this stuff that I'm not gonna speak into power right now. But the fact that at this point in my life with a baby in my tummy and you know, five years of sobriety, I can think to myself, I can do it and I love myself and I'm safe and I am loved and I am protected and really believe it, it's like, that's what makes me cry. Like, that's really beautiful. That's a really beautiful thing that I get to experience now. And to get to bring a baby into the world where his mother feels that way, I think is really, really special and important. So even though these are tricks that mostly will be in, like, and tools that I'll use mostly on Labor Day, I need to start arming myself up now. You know, like this is the time that I, you know, build these muscles that I believe in myself now so that on D-Day, I am ready to go. You know what I mean? And the same is true with my sobriety. If I don't work my sobriety every day, if I don't turn it over to my higher power every day and I say, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt, relieve me of the bondage of self so that I might better do thy will. All if I don't do that every day, then slowly I get uh, my muscles atrophy, right? And before I know it, like I'm riddled with self-doubt, I'm shaking with anxiety, I hate myself, and I can't go back there. Because it's not just about me anymore. It's about my dogs, dude. It's about my baby, it's about my husband, it's about all of these things that I've built and that I love, and it's about myself. And it's about the people that see me and believe in me, I have to show up for them. And in order to do that, I gotta make sure I'm right up here. Keep it tight up here, keep it loose down there. Another thing I practice, and this is out of left field, relaxing my face. I've been having a lot of pain lately, not just in my ribs, but because baby's head down now, he's like pushing on what I call the, if you're coming in from the outside through my vagina, I say the top shelf of my vagina, but I think that's really just my cervix. Um, and I'm not an anatomist, so I couldn't tell you. But um, he's really waging a war on the top shelf of my inner vagina. And it is f painful and brutal. And um, what a strong baby. Anyway, when I get to that pain, one of the things that um, our birthing class instructed is like, during labor, you relax your face, you slack your jaw, you want to just kind of let your body do what it does. And if I'm working and if I'm wincing in pain, or not just totally relaxed, then I'm not working with my body. So when I have those pains, 
I practice just relaxing my face, going slack draw, I do my breathing with a noise. Sometimes a uh, helps me feel better. Also, I've been doing a bunch of research and it's, I guess, a lot harder to breathe when you're in labor. So that's something that I'm practicing for or making myself aware of really. Like, I might not be able to take a big controlled breath in, but I will be able to go. I can take little breaths in and let those go. Um, but always keeping it focused on my stomach expanding rather than from my chest because I've noticed that when I breathe into my chest it feels like anxiety and when I breathe into my tummy it feels like relief. Um, so those are some physical and mental exercises I try to do every ding dong day to uh, get my PHAT ass ready for labor. Um, I'm also eating some specific stuff. Come on, I'll show you. Hold on. I don't know how to get up. So right now I'm hungry and I truly would prefer to have a ham sandwich. Unfortunately, I've been told by my doctor that if I eat uh, deli meats, I'm more likely, it's like a high risk thing to getting listeria and listeria can break through the placenta and kill the baby. So I can't really enjoy a ham sandwich if I'm concerned about the listeria killing my child. So I don't eat ham sandwiches. But that being said, I have also been told that consuming raspberry leaf tea, which is a lot like a ham sandwich if you close your eyes and cry a little bit, um, helps is it soften the cervix? It does something that helps you with labor. So I make big jugs of that so that I can have it every day with iced tea, as iced tea. And I do a honey in it and a whole lemon in it. I do five raspberry leaf tea bags in the jug with honey and lemon. So I'm going to boil the water, and while the water boils, I'm gonna make myself a protein shake, which is also not a ham sandwich. It's not. It isn't ever gonna be a ham sandwich. It's always gonna be a protein shake. And you know, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine, we'll have ham sammy soon. You won't wait, won't wait. Anyway, follow me over here. Come with me, come with me. Um, another thing that either softens the cervix or does God knows what to make uh, preg or Labor Day a little bit more tenable, maybe. Also, all of this with this, the disclaimer of um, sometimes this shit doesn't work. <laughs> sometimes your labor is what it is. Uh, all the time, you can't control anything, but you can walk through most things with dignity and grace. Um, and some would argue you can walk through all things, um, sometimes without dignity or grace. So those are also options. Back to the pregnancy prep though, or the Labor Day prep. I've been told if I eat a total of like six dates a day, I might have a smoother labor. My stomach is this big and six dates is bigger than my stomach. So I, um, I'm gonna split this up I guess cause I can't really consume it all in one f sitting. Um, so I put three dates in my milkshake. The dates is the first stop on the smoothie trip. So hang on while I correct the rest of my smoothie. Go oh no, you've fallen. I'm gonna tighten you up. We gonna tighten this camera up. You ain't gonna fall again. I'm gonna take care of you, girl. Don't you worry. So then I also put some goji berries in that and some pumpkin seeds in it. So we get some of the nutritional value of that shit. Oh, you know what? I should probably start boiling the water. Stand by, one sec. How do I make this taller? Ooh, it's been a while since she used the tripod. There we go. That's better, right? You're not just looking right at my nose. And that's the other thing, in pregnancy, I think I'm producing more boogers. Is that a thing, Bobo? Do you know? Bobo's a fan of the boogers because it means Tim's gets to eat them. Huh, you eating a lot of boogies? Yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna fill the water jug, one sec. I just realized I'm doing this whole vlog in a bra, but here's what my thought process was. It's like, 
I don't want to wear a bra, but if I do wear a bra, which I should wear a bra because it's the vlog, I'm not going to put a shirt on. But when I'm done filming, I'm going to take my bra off and put a shirt on. And that's just how we're working right now together as a team. Um, and it's, it's working just fine for me. Damn, you know what else I want? And salami and cheesy chips. And I want to roll them up in a little, a little taco thing together and just have little crunchies of it. Um, that's what I want. But instead, I'm going to have a smoothie. I also put this in my smoothie. This shit. Um, these have been a lifesaver. I've been chugging these in the middle of the night if I wake up hungry. And they help because I don't have to, like my brain's not like on to feed myself. I just chug it and go back to bed and it's pretty lovely. Um, and then I also add a banana and ice. And last but not least, some freaking almond butter, bro. So that's what I put in my smoothies. Suddenly I see. Nobody likes a warm smoothie, that's gross. Get your banana, pinch the back off so you can give it to your Frenchie. Love you guys. Then pour it into your Aquaman cup. And it's still not a ham sandwich. Now I'm gonna enjoy my smoothie. Honestly, it's good as fuck. It's like the peanut butter dream smoothie. Is that what it's called? A Jamba Juice? Mm. It's really not bad, but it's also not a ham sandwich. So that's how I gauge it. Iggy, are you ready for the baby? Are you ready for the baby? Bobo. Are you ready to be a daddy? Are you ready to be a daddy? You are? Yes? Wow. Icky, are you ready to be a big brother? And a baby? Ah. You are so ready. Whoop. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That is great news, because we need to be ready. I just wanted to pop back in here and say, hold on, let me turn off the cartoons. I've been filming the sip with Ryland all day. That's why I've got makeup on, it look pretty. Um, Oh, sheesh. I am all kinds of hot and flustered and pregnant and needing to be in the bath right now. That being said, I just wanted to pop back in here. Do I need a better lip from the front? Is this better? This probably just isn't telling a good physical story. It just looks like I'm dying and melting slowly. But I am. It's hot. It's 107 degrees, guys. It is 107 degrees here. Um. I just wanted to pop back in here and say to all, because I know that there's a lot of my girlies out there who are pregnant also right now, and I see a lot of you, oh, God damn it. Icky, you pissed on the rug, bro. It's okay, I bought a tumble rug. My God, it's a gem of a lifesaver. I can wash this rug every week if I have to. And honestly, I kind of have to because my dog pisses on it. That's on me, Joe's at work. I've been gone at work all day. He had to go potty. I still love him. He's ready to be a big brother. Anyway, I see a lot of you ladies saying, I'm not ready. And I honestly think that's okay. It's okay to not be ready. I don't think anybody is actually fucking ready for anything. If it's not like a driver's test or a school exam, like those are things you can get ready for, right? Everything in life besides that, we can prepare for but if we've never done it, how can we say with certainty, sorry, <laughs> tell me you're nesting without telling me you're nesting. First time in four years I cleaned my camera lens. Parenthood is something you can prepare for all you want, but without knowing what's coming, and I bet you anything we don't really know what's coming. Like we can guess. We can gauge from our friends' experiences what might happen, what could be. We can plan. We can hope, we can dream, we can pray. But no matter what, we never know 100% without a shadow of a doubt what's coming. So we can't be fully ready for it. But what we can do is be ready to go with the flow. 
And that's what I mean when I say I'm going limp. I just mean I'm going with the flow. I'm gonna let the river take me, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have patience for myself and grace because I've never been a parent before. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let myself <coughs> inhale some cleaning stuff. It's okay. It's Mayer's. <coughs> ah, ah. Couldn't have prepared for that. Probably could have though. I could have seen that coming. I bet a smart person would have seen it coming. <sighs> I can prepare to be unprepared. And by that, I mean I'm gonna give myself grace. I'm gonna allow myself to be messy and to learn. I'm gonna allow my kid to be messy and to learn. And together, we're gonna figure this out. And as long as I come to the table with love and, you know, joy and sometimes exhaustion, but always honesty and gratitude, I think it's gonna be okay. You know what I'm saying? Because no matter what, I know that Ripley's got my back. And I've never lived before. I had never been 20 before I was 20. I'd never gotten sober before I got sober. And all of these things were new when I did them. I didn't come out the womb knowing how to crawl. I learned how to crawl and then I learned how to walk. So just like everything in life, I don't need to be at the expert level day one. I might never reach the expert level of a lot of things. And that's okay. We don't need to be perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. But we can strive to be the best that we can offer. And that is what I can do in preparation. I am prepared to do the best that I can on every day that I can offer it. And sometimes if my best is just getting out of bed and making breakfast, then that's my best that day. And that's okay. So be easy on yourselves, guys. Items don't make you prepared. You know, re like reading a book can definitely help. Knowing what to expect a little bit can help. It can take the edge off. Like I've said before, like anxiety, makes you, in some people, anxiety can make you get ready as much as you can be ready. And now I'm gonna say, peace out Girl Scout. I'm ready to be excited because I can do this because you can do this. If I can do this, you can certainly do this. I'm a big baby. So, peace out anxiety. <sighs> I can do this. You are safe. You are loved, you are cared for, and you can do this too, ladies. And I'm really grateful that we get to be pregnant together. Even if you guys aren't pregnant, but you're just here along for the ride, like, it's been nice having you. You guys are really sweet and supportive, and it makes me feel better and stronger, and more, even more capable. Like, you're part of my I can do this mantra, so thank you for coming along for this journey and for everything that you say in the comment section. I read a lot of it, and you guys are always nice to me except for you clanger but I know in your heart you don't mean the nasty you say because for some reason it doesn't hurt my feelings it just makes me feel like we're sarcastic friends even though I know you think I'm gross but that's okay buddy you can do it too <laughs> I believe in you and I'll see y'all next Tuesday if it's a Wednesday it's a Wednesday I'm a mess but we'll get back on track I'm sure as soon as I find a new flow I'm just doing what I can and I hope you guys do what you can too, because I love you. Oh.